Imagine you were able to transport your brain into the body of a professional pool player. So you, a novice, suddenly had the, the stroke and the precision and the aim of a pro, and you're able to fire balls in all over the table. How good would you be? Probably not as good as you think you would be. A smart uh, friend of mine named Ron Shepard once did this experiment. He paired highly skilled pool players with novice pool players, and on each team he had the highly skilled pool players shoot all the shots. And the kicker is that the, the shooter could only do exactly what the, the novice uh, told him to do. So if the novice said shoot the five ball into this corner pocket and send the cue ball bouncing in this direction, that's what the shooter had to attempt to do. The results were not very good. It turns out the novice frequently directed the shooter to do things that were beyond the shooter's skill level and often even physically impossible. The problem is that the novice had a poor intuition about what the cue ball wanted to do naturally after the shot and had little understanding of what control the shooter actually has over the cue ball. So what I'd like to do is address a, a number of principles of cue ball control and, and positioning. And as you can see, I've clearly identified the different legs of the motion of the cue ball. The A path is the path that the cue ball takes after striking the object ball and before hitting a rail. The B path is the path off the first rail. And the C path is the path off the second rail. Uh, and this distinction is made for good reason because different things control these different paths. So here's the first uh, important principle that many people don't appreciate. Side spin on the cue ball has no effect on the A path. So I can hit this with right side spin or left side spin. It doesn't make any difference. It takes the same path. And this is important because many shots only have an A path. All of the shots that a, that a player takes on the pool table for which you don't run into a rail, side spin has no effect. And because side spin makes every shot more difficult, uh, there's no reason to use side spin uh, if you're not going to run into a rail. So in the rest of this video, I would like to address the A path uh, and what affects it. And in the next video, uh, I will address the effects of side spin, so the B and the C path. To illustrate what affects the A path, I'm setting up a few shots that you can set up on your own table. In every case, the cue ball is going to go on the foot spot like that, and the object ball is going to go in one of three locations. So I've drawn a line at the first diamond here, and I've put three locations. The first location uh, is directly between the cue ball and this diamond here, and the other two locations are directly between the cue ball and these half diamonds on either side of that diamond. The first thing I'm going to tell you is that the best way to forfeit all control over your A path is to hit the ball hard. So the object ball is going to go in that direction, and if you hit this ball hard, the cue ball is going to go in that direction, it's going to hit the rail right there, and there's absolutely nothing you can do about that. So if I hit the ball hard, I'm guaranteed to hold this tangent line, to hold the white line and hit the rail right here. If I hit it with medium speed, I can hit it a stun shot where there's no spin on the cue ball when it hits the object ball and it would still follow this white line, the tangent line. Or I can hit it with top spin and come down to here, or I can hit it with bottom spin and come down to here. So this is my range uh, if I hit it with medium speed. If I hit it softly, I have maximum control of what the cue ball does on the A path. So what happens if I move the object ball from the center spot to the upper spot such that I have a thinner cut on the object ball? With a thinner cut, there's very little control the shooter has over the A path. Uh, the, the cue ball is going to take uh, the tangent line and it's going to stay very close to the tangent line. If the tangent line here led to the center of a pocket, it, there might be nothing that the player could do to avoid scratching. So if that's the case, you might imagine that if I went to the lower position like that, uh, I would actually increase uh, the control over the A path, and that's true. Okay, so what you just saw is that reducing the angle had a big effect over my control on the A path. Uh, with this particular shot, I was able to more or less come straight over to the cushion, soft and with follow, uh, and I was also able to, with maximum draw, actually go back about like that. So that means that I can get any path uh, in between these. That's quite a lot of control over the A path. You might guess that I could get maximum control over the A path by making the angle 
very small by making the shot almost straight. And that would be true. Uh, with, a, with a shot like this, I could follow the cue ball to here, or I could draw it back to there and get any place in between. So that's maximum control over the A-path. So why don't players frequently play position to try to achieve a very small angle, nearly straight in? There's three reasons I can think of. One is while nearly straight in gives the, the greatest range for the A-path, if you get actually straight in, that's the kiss of death for, for position play. Uh, so you don't want to be near straight in. A second reason is while you can go off at any angle here, the exact angle you go off on a nearly straight in shot is pretty sensitive to exactly how you hit that ball and, when, and how much uh, top or bottom spin is on it. And the third reason is that players like to go off uh, into the rail with speed, and we'll talk about that in the next video. Uh, but you can't go off with, with much speed when you have a nearly straight in shot. So in summary for the A-path, for all shots hit at an angle like this, the cue ball initially follows the tangent line, and top spin can make the cue ball veer forward of the tangent line, and back spin can make it veer backwards of the tangent line. And there's three things that make the cue ball want to tend to hold the tangent line. One is hitting the cue ball hard. Uh, second is having uh, a thin shot, quite a lot of angle. Uh, and the third thing is having new or slick cloth. This is relatively new, relatively slippery cloth. That makes the cue ball tend to want to hold uh, the tangent line. You'll see professional pool players frequently pay, play position for an angle about like this one. A half ball hit or a little bit straighter than a half ball hit. And there's a couple of reasons for that. One is that there's a reasonable range for what the A path can do, for what the, the player can do uh, with the cue ball before it hits a rail. Second, there's enough of an angle that the, the player can go into the rail uh, with the cue ball having a fair amount of speed. Uh, and third, if this is near a half ball hit, the angle that the cue ball comes off that ball with natural roll follow is very predictable. And you can learn more about that in my half ball hit uh, part two video. So players control the A path by speed of the cue ball when it hits the object ball and the amount of forward or reverse spin the cue ball has when it hits the object ball. Side spin has no effect on the A path. There's three things that make the cue ball tend to want to hold the tangent line. One is when it is uh, going faster when it hits the object ball. Second is when uh, the object ball is cut thinner. And third is when the cloth is, is slicker. Those all tend to make the cue ball want to hold the tangent line. Uh, finally, players frequently play for near a half ball hit uh, on the object ball because the path of the cue ball and the natural rolling cue ball is very predictable in that situation.